Jim Balvano's Fight Against Cancer. You are watching the Big Ten on ESPN. Not since Juan Dixon was a freshman has Maryland started this strong, undefeated number three in the country, and their conference opener in maybe the best conference in the land comes today against Illinois. Thanks for joining us, Jason Benetti, Dan Dockich, along with you, and the guy who has the ball in his hand more often than anybody else for Maryland, Anthony Cowan, is a star. He is an absolute star. I love this kid. Started as a freshman, has been starting ever since came in with Herder and Jackson he has been not good he's been great at the end of games you know he's gone games where he's kind of felt it out in the first half and then gone for 16 in the second but you see there he's moving up all kinds of lists one of only three players to get 1500 points and 400 assists absolute star first team all-american right now but he's got a big test today because Illinois pretty athletic and a little bit angry a lot angry if, if Brad Underwood's comments before the game and shoot around or any indication. I mean, he was really frustrated. He said that game that we saw on Monday, Mar uh, Miami and Illinois, that is not me, is what he said to us. And, and it's not him. Uh, he's used to getting in your pocket defensively and showing maximum effort. And we didn't see that off the top of the game against Miami. No, we sure didn't. We saw a nice comeback, and they actually had a chance to win the game after being down 27. His exact quote, I can tolerate a lot of things, but I cannot tolerate the way we played in the first half. So I'm guessing you're going to see all out effort by the guys in blue and orange. They get the ball first to Monte Williams is in the starting lineup in for Andres Feliz. 22nd start of the career of the junior Demonte Williams from Peoria. Here is Georgie Bishanishvili and a foul called against Maryland and Daryl Morsell. So there's the Maryland starting five. We told you about Cowan. Six Smith is a dangerous guy. Daryl Morsell is their best defender out on the perimeter. Daryl Morsell is tough on tough. Wiggins shoots it. Ayala, middle of, the, middle of the court with a ball screen, and Stick Smith can do a lot of things, including shoot from the top of the key. Well, you gotta go up with that if you're Georgie against a guy with a foul. But he was so unselfish. He ended up with five assists in the game on Monday. And for Mark Turgeon, he goes no tie. Uh, ninth season as the Maryland head coach. This may be his, his best team. It's his deepest so team. Yeah, it's his deepest team, no question about it. I mean, he had a team with a bunch of pros, laymen and all, but yeah, I, look, they play hard. They really improved, I thought, by leaps and bounds from game one to game three in Orlando. This stick Smith shot. Front iron. I, I know he's had Bruno Fernando and Kevin yeah. Herter and all those guys, Melo Trimble. But they're playing together and defensively right. as well as any team we've seen in Maryland. Yeah, and Mark's not afraid to go to zone late in games. Trent Frazier, who had been very good offensively, to Kofi Coburn, who was tremendous in the game against Miami at 8 for 8 from the floor. That was a great pass by Frazier. Came off the ball screen and no look to lob. He did near look at us and threw it up just high enough to Coburn. You are a magnetizing presence. People do tend to be drawn to you. Duh. Answer for Ayala for Maryland. I love that kid. That kid can play point guard. He can play off the ball. He can get in the lane and be strong. He is a defender. Terrific six man when they asked him. 52 threes last year. Fifth most for a Maryland freshman. And you saw he had the big game against Notre Dame in the Big Ten ACC Challenge. Coburn, what a catch. I mean, that was a wide receiver adjustment on that ball. Do you know how hard that is for a young big kid on the left side of the basket to catch it in the air and with his right hand put it in? He made that look easy. He started playing organized basketball at age 15. I mean, that's terrifying for the Big Ten. Stick Smith, no. Rebound Illinois, and everybody wearing gold wants a foul. Well, Stick Smith should have got a foul, but he kind of backed out of the contact after having Colburn up in the air. Georgie's been passed first, and that's going to be a screen. 
against Illinois and Bishanishvili, but back to Culber and the other big. Well, they did this twice. This time it's Williams. This is not easy. I'm telling you, I know it looks easy, and he made it look easier because he used two hands, not just his right hand. Now, being a post guy offensively and defensively is so much more difficult these days because you got to play outside move it onto the inside they're going to go to the monitor bill Eck is going to come talk to dan terry oglesby and dj karstensen are going to the monitor and so they're going to check and see on the screen frazier got called for the foul dan's getting the message as you see bill's got the look that everybody has when they leave talking to dan uh what did he say to you well, you got to share with us. Uh, no, he said we got a possible elbow. I said, which guy? He said, I don't know. I think the guy <laughs> guarding Colin. Let's see. Downstairs, bottom left, uh, Frazier. Oh, that's not. That's, that's common foul. Yeah. Be done with it, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, I don't. That's yeah, foul. Nothing yeah. to the head. And they called the foul, and it'll be a common foul. That's the end of it, right? I think when you play point guard at Maryland, because of Mellow Trimble, you got to look to throw your head back all the time. <laughs> I mean, it hasn't been that long, so it's. I know. Yeah. But he's the follow-up to Trimble, and he learned to throw his head. Well, back. you know how that works, though. You watch the guys who came before sure. you, and you emulate what they do. I'm little. I'm being serious. I know you because are. Mello not... Trimble got a lot of fouls. That's yeah. a legitimate foul, and you know, really, from Frazier, there's no excuse because all Cowan was doing was guarding. Him. The previous play stands as called. Bill X says common foul. You could get a flop. You could. I would call I mean, it. You very well could. I would not call that even close to a flop. I would call it an exaggeration. Well, that's that's not in the rule book. What's the difference? It's not a flop. It's an exaggeration. He you just, just threw made his head up back. a category of non-foul, <laughs> and we're only two minutes twenty seconds in. Maryland scores eighty points a game. They're nine and zero. Oh. They've beaten Marquette. They've beaten Notre Dame. That was the other night right here at Xfinity Center. Here's Cowan on the fadeaway. And the rebound for Coburn in Illinois. Well, Illinois fans, you got to be happy. The ball has been stopped by the defense of Illinois, unlike against Miami when they couldn't keep the ball in front of them. Yeah, what's different so far a couple minutes in? Two things. Number one, I don't think Maryland's going that hard to the basket off of ball screens. And the second thing is they're not setting good ball screens. Stick Smith is kind of trying to pop. you got to nail the guy, turn the corner, and make the, make the big guy 21 play you. They didn't turn it there either. So what are we looking at this possession? Well, they're trying to get a high low, but that's not going to happen against Kofi. He'll go to ball screen late. Smith top of the key for Wiggins. Wiggins a jumper. No dice. Here comes Ayo Dosumu, the sophomore who just had the last field goal for Illinois. Nice cut. The shot is Vili for Williams. All right. The plan is obviously go into Vishana's Vili against Marcel. I don't think Vishana Zvili has been as aggressive as he should be. He has to look at the basket every time he gets it simply because he's bigger than Morcel and Morcel has a foul. That time he at least looked to make a pass. Yeah, he was pass first. There it is, ball screen. Smith Smith hanging for two. Jalen Smith, the sophomore from the Charm City. That time, Cowan got serious about turning the corner and drew the big guy. Vishana Zvili intercepted. Smith on his way. He wanted to dunk that thing. Instead, it's going to be a tie-up, and Maryland will have it when we come back. Lively crowd here in College Park as per Unbe normal. Unbelievable student section here. Watch this here. You go to Bashanas Vili. He's got to look to attack the basket. When he does, he can pass or score. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lexus. Experience amazing. 8-5 your score, Illinois. It's a good pass in here. Yeah, middle of the court, there is no help. You see, the court's pretty much spread, and you let, I'm telling you, you get the ball in the post to Bashanis Vili, he can make something good happen for himself or others, but if you let... Illinois turn the corner and Kofi Coburn get a body with you on the high side of him. You have no chance of getting back. He's so good. How about Trent Frazier going high to touch that ball and knock it back into play? Demonte Williams too short. 
A good block out. Really good block out. Everybody. Dante Scott, 24. Watch him, freshman. Really, really talented kid. Out of Philadelphia and five and a half points a game already to his name. A four-star recruit who won a number of public league titles in Philadelphia. Stick Smith attacking and missing. Uh, he attacked, but Kipper Nichols came over and played great defense, putting his hands up straight up. No call. Fantastic by Nichols, who didn't play but two minutes against Miami. Yeah, one of a couple of seniors on this team, and Brad Underwood has been very hard on him in the past. Here's his drive, and he draws a whistle, and the crowd on the other end wants a foul evenly as Nichols will go to the free throw line. Yeah, I think the help side defense is so important. Look under the bucket. Kipper Nichols is there, right there, and he's there early, and he goes straight up. That's just discipline, and that's being in help side early. If he were late to get there, it would have been a bucket, a foul, or both. You say that often, help side early. Why is it so important? Because when you're late, you reach, Jason, and when you reach, you can't do anything. The bodies on these guys, they just play right through a reach. But when your body is physically there early, you can do what Nichols just did. You can avoid a foul and go straight up. And you don't have to reach. Reaching bad. Reaching bad. Reaching bad. Help side early. Good. Great. 9-0 Maryland. Number three in the country. We saw Louisville trounce Michigan earlier this week. To likely stay number one, Kansas number two. Cowan little jump pass to the corner, and it wouldn't go down for Dante Scott. This will be Maryland basketball, a college football championship weekend, by the way. The 15th annual ACC championship game tonight from Charlotte and Bank of America Stadium. Clemson pretty solidly in the college football playoff. Guaranteed if they win, Virginia, a team that finally beat its rival Virginia Tech last weekend. 7.30 Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. Any chance for uh, Wahoo Wah tonight? Apparently Vegas doesn't think so. It's 28 and a half point favorite. But that's a little embarrassing for a ACC, is it not? They just beat Virginia Tech. That's a good team. Bronco Menor, really good. very good, a coach. Very good coach. Yep. Well, Clemson is playing on another level. Yeah, that, you defense, agree? that defense terrifying. Trevor Lawrence, who started out slow, he's been pretty good. Yeah, there. that might have been the best thing that happened to them is that he started out kind of slow. But since then, they have been unstoppable. Illinois defense so much more oh. active than Monday night. This is what you're used to right there. Guys on the floor scramble around on a Brad Underwood defense. And now they push. For two, foot on the line. Frazier knocks down the jumper for Illinois. Yeah, there was a signal to the sideline to take a look at that at the break, whether or not he had the foot on the line. You know how you can tell Cowan is uncomfortable? How's that? He shot the last shot, and he had to lift it behind his head. And when he lifts it behind his head, he's uncomfortable. There you go. One of the twins, Makai Mitchell, lifted out. Well, that's what you do against Cobra, and you go right at him. If you fade away, he's going to block. On the other end, a wide-open look. Frazier for three, Illinois by nine. Frazier start on the right side in transition, ran to the left side, just crossing the floor. Nobody found him, nobody communicated for Maryland. Got three freshmen out there. One of them, Hakeem Hart, freshman from Philly. Oh, is that good by Felix? Look, him all over, all over Cowan. Yeah, he denied him for five seconds. Now Cowan to the rim. Challenged once again. Coburn is there with Mitchell, who missed. Wow, point blank shots right on the welcome mat. Yeah, but not comfortable because big old Coburn's in there changing people's minds. You can see the influence both of Cowan and then of Mitchell. He is a persuasive young man. Yes, he it? is. At six foot nine, 300 perfectly built pounds. Nobody's described you as that in years. Flabby. <laughs> Frazier. Missed it. That's, right. That's why now I was going to say. 
So no rim on that shot. Late in the shot clock, they get the jumper for Feliz, and Illinois got a double-figure lead. Totally different team in Monday night. And I'll give you an example of why. The rebound came off. Feliz, instead of standing, when you're not engaged, you would just stand. He came to the ball. Illinois by 11 in College Park. How about this? Wow. Complete 180 for Illinois right now, up 11 in the first half against unbeaten Maryland. Here's a look at that last shot, see if he got it off, Philly. Yeah, he definitely did, and Felice made a great play coming over and not leaving the big guy hanging. And you see, you see right above the light, you see the light goes off as the ball's in the air. Great play by Coleman, great play by Felice. Here's Hart, mm -hmm. and that's a travel, so Maryland what? turns it over. That wasn't, it was kind of Hart's fault because he's a guy to travel, but it was created by Felice. It, next time down the floor, watch number 10 in blue guarding number one in yellow. He is on top of him. Old school, man, you ball defense has been tremendous on Kyle. Brad Underwood was adamant today in shoot around that what happened on Monday wasn't going to happen again. He Heartened by the comeback. He was happy with that. And Kofi Coburn punches that in for his sixth point today. Thus far, Stick Smith wants nothing to do with Coburn, and Stick Smith is coming out. Would you want anything to do with Kofi Coburn? On basketball court, I'm good with it. I think to make this. Smith got it for three. That's his shot. And Coburn can't play both. He can't play that ball screen and get back and affect Stick Smith's shot. So how do you use Stick Smith today? Then? Just like that. Ball screen, ball screen, more ball screen, and pop back. Shoot it, shot fake, and drive it. One of the two. The Belgian, Ben Bosman's Redolph, the freshman is in, number 13, Ooh. screening. That was a carry, possibly, for Io. To Sumu. Colburn. And the rebound for Maryland and Morcel. Instead, he scores on his own. He held Marcus Howard to six points. He was unbelievable in that game. And when they struggled just a little bit, he dominated the inside of the Marquette zone. He was fantastic. Cowan was the MVP, but Marcel was MVP 1.0. Trap. Double can, Coburn was uncomfortable, Illinois turns it over. Isn't it amazing what happens when you play really hard? Yes. You, you get all kinds of stuff. Illinois is playing really hard. Scott was there early yeah, on early. the double. Absolutely. All right, watch this. Here's Scott. It's, there's no place for Coburn to go because Dick Smith takes away the baseline opposite the help guy. If the help guy is on Coburn's right shoulder, then the defender on Coburn gets to the left shoulder. It's that simple, but doesn't get done all the time. Mitchell to find, jumper for Wiggins.
and Wiggins. They tried to flare screen him. That didn't work. And they rescreened for him. That did work. The only guy who had more threes as a freshman at Maryland in history is Kevin Herter than Wiggins last year. You can find Herter in the NBA nowadays down in Atlanta. That's pretty good in the NBA when he's helping. Oh, yeah. Basuma recovers, gets it back with two, got a fire, missed it. Maryland on the run. Wiggins. Ooh, oh, man. That's, that's a bad call. I love DJ, but that's a bad call. I don't even need a replay. Here it is for you anyway. That's sliding left. Slow motion obviously doesn't show how much he's sliding. Pretty good. Ah, you that know looked better right Honestly, there, actually. I think he, even though the foot was sliding late, Real he time. was in there. Watch. I think he was in there, Dan. I really do. He went side and down. But he was in position before the jump. Yeah, he was. I think, which makes then, it an offensive foul. And then foul. he put his hip out, moved. Bishanishvili got it for two. Hey, Bart Fox, our producer. Open Bart's mic. Bart's hostile right now. I'm not down with that. See, this is what I'm talking about. Shot fake and drive him. Smith, no. Mitchell had it and lost it. And he's called for a foul. That's a really good call. Mitchell needs to get out of there. There's no business for him doing anything other than running down the court. Yeah, and Ayala, that's smart play by Ayala. Ayala's an adult. Say, get out. Just get out. He brings the ball down. You're going to see Mitchell gets it, brings it down right here. He had to, and there it's stripped. And now there's your foul. Easy call. That was exactly called the right sure. way. It was a clean strip, and then Mitchell went back in for more. Just go down the court. This is an exciting game. There's going to be some stuff happening in this game. You can feel it. How often do you just go down the court in life? You like to stick your nose back in. You get called for a foul every once in a while in the tweet box. I don't know where we're going to go here. Bashanishvili with the left. He didn't have much room. You he, know it. He's dribbling and then faking. He's got a fake and then dribble. It would put the defender off balance. Talon got bailed out with a foul. He was about to travel. Time to Sumu. Tomorrow, three Eastern college basketball on ABC and the ESPN app. The Lone Star Showdown between Texas A&M and Texas at the new Dickies Arena in Fort Worth. Join me and Jay Billis for that. Uh, look, they haven't played on United States territory since they split leagues, A&M and Texas. A series that goes way, way back, more than 100 meetings. It's going to be really fun. It's been a struggle early for Buzz Williams. Texas has the one loss to, to Georgetown before that thing combusted. I watched Texas beat Purdue. And Texas is a team with talent. Frazier. Mm. Yes, sir. There's three. Tell you what, this is what we talked about with Doug Altenberger before the game. Illinois has got to push the ball and get into secondary break. Or initial break. They don't want to play half court offense. Push it, find it, shoot it. You're in good shape. This looks, uh, when we went into uh -huh. that Illinois Miami game on Monday, we both thought Illinois had the uh, talent to be a tournament team. They look nothing like it on Monday, and the response has been tremendous as Frazier got boxed out by Cowan. Cowan has gone scoreless in halves, including first half against Rhode Island here. And then had a big second half. I promise you, even though he's not getting anything done, he will be there at the end. 1,500 points, 450 assists. He, John Lucas, Gravis Vasquez, the only three in Maryland history. John Lucas, first pick in the draft. Desumu picked his spot. His shot is really no. And the rebound for Smith. That's that weave action we saw Underwood go to late in the game against Miami. It's pretty good. Offensive foul on Morcel, his second personal. And Williams took a beating on that charge. Good call? Good I call thought it was call. a really good call. Again, they're early. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure there was contact. He's in charge.
23 12 here uh, Kevin Illinois by 11 their largest lead uh, it's a totally different team than Monday against Miami remember they were down 45 18 in that game in Champaign. Yeah with no energy and they yeah, came back great. which was great but this That's game great. totally different the guards whether it's Williams whether it's Felice whether it's Frazier it doesn't matter they are playing and playing hard Cowan has gotten nothing done thus far but he will. Well if you believe college basketball is effort and coaching this flip from Monday is a substantial piece of evidence for that. No question. Scott on the drive, the freshman, tough shot. All right, good shot, bad shot on that one. It's a good shot, but you know what Illinois, or excuse me, Maryland needs to do? Go in, because you know the game plan right now. Jump up, put your hand straight in the air, the Illinois defense, right? So go in there, jump stop, get the man in the air, and then you get fouled, or you may get a bucket, or you get both. It, it, you got to adjust to how the game has been played. That's a foul against Illinois and Allen Griffin, who had eight points in 15 minutes on Monday. It's a Big Ten opener for both these teams, and Illinois got it pretty tough. They at Maryland today, and then next week home against a very tough Michigan team. Yeah, Michigan bounced back from a bad loss. They scored over 100 points in kind of a shootout with Iowa. How about Luca Brasi Garcia going for 44? Garza. Yeah, Garza. Yeah. Luca Brazzi Garza. Your guy. I love him. I love him. He just plays hard. He does. He plays really hard. We'll see them on Thursday against Iowa State. Hawkeyes in that big rivalry game. Ayala had the miss and Easy. a foul against Bishanishvili on the rebound. Well, he saved two points because Smith had inside position and was going to go ahead and probably tip dunk that. But he got his second foul, so now he's done for probably the next six and a half. How about Ohio State today put up 106 oh, in Big Ten play against Penn State? See that again? Yep. They drove it in the lane, and the offense jumps before the defense has a chance Maryland, to jump. If Maryland would just go in there, jump stop, shot fake, change the game. Yeah, Ohio State was ridiculous. Four guys that hit four threes. I'm telling you, Caleb Wesson is a first-team All-American at this point in the season, 28-10, but even better defensively. He's made a massive change to his game. Everything. Better shape. Yeah, health, lifestyle, shape. I mean, everything. Wiggins. No. Maryland's had some open looks. They have not gone down. The Terps are now two for 12 from three to open the game. And they have been. They've had some open looks. And one of the things Mark Turgeon said, if we could ever just knock in our open looks in one game, we'd feel pretty good. They have it. A couple of missed threes from Griffin the last few times down, and Cowan has it picked off by Williams. Great hustle by Cowan. Cowan, or excuse me, by Williams. He just sprinted the floor. This is a muscular, rugged game so far, isn't it? Wiggins not shy. Got it for three. He not missing two of those wide open. 15 points a game as a high school senior, talented shooter. Out of Greensboro. That's a foul against Scott. So look, Maryland's unbeaten number three in the country. Will it be another upset? Remember earlier this year, Walter McCarty and Evansville go to Rupp Arena, get the win. Virginia Tech, the upset against Michigan State in Maui that you don't think is a huge upset necessarily. But Stephen F. Austin, Brad Underwood's former team, got in Duke's pocket all night long at Cameron in one of the really great games of college basketball this year so far. No, I think all three are big time upsets. I don't think there's a great team in college basketball. So I don't necessarily get that shocked when somebody beats a high-ranked team on a neutral court. But Stephen F. Austin's holy smokes in camera. Well, I had part of that, I mean, the legacy Brad Underwood has created with that system in the Southland Conference has 
lasted even past his tenure there. And part of it is what you're seeing out here, and it's on the defensive end. I mean, you're going to see a Brad Underwood team, I would guess, rarely, if ever again, have a half like they had against Miami. What you're seeing out here now is a Brad Underwood team, whether it's Stephen F. Austin, Oklahoma State, doesn't matter. Hey, he's in a way better state of mind right now. He's, he's allowed to be much more calm today with what his team's doing. Brendan in that Miami game, although now he's off his chair. He said move it, and they yeah, will. They want it side to side or into the post here to Kobe. His voice does carry as you see him shouting from the other side of the court. Kipper Nichols on oh, Coburn over the top of everybody. Fresh 20. Great find by Frazier to Nichols, the recovery for Stick Smith. That was great by Stick Smith. He did to Illinois what Illinois has been doing to them. Basketball everywhere and out of bounds. It's going to go to Illinois. This is a bit AAU-ish. <laughs> Watch this, straight up. That's a terrific play. And I'm so glad they changed the rule to where you can go straight up and forget about, well, he got him with the body and all that nonsense. Great change in the rule, and the coaches and players have adapted. You got to play defense somewhere. Right. Kipper Nichols, turn around. He's got his two Kipper, for Kipper Nichols. Nichols. Kipper Nichols has had three shots in the last two possessions. He just made the hardest one. He's been big time in this game, and he's big time talking. You see him right side of your screen. A lot of talk. A lot of talk. Tipped around. Crowd wanted basket interference. Nichols again. Oh. Had a chance at it. Now Cowan, who has not scored in his first half. Shot fake. Stick Smith. Use the shot fake, put it in. Reason the shot fake was important there is two things. One, you got a chance to get Coburn off. There you go. Count the bucket. There's a foul on the rebounding action. They will sort this out as we will step aside. The shot counts. Take a look at the other Both end. Ten? Let's see. Was it on the bucket? No. No. No goal ten. None. Seth, I love you long time, but I don't know that I would say disinterested. I would say knocked back on their heels a bit by the aggressiveness of Maryland, particularly on the perimeter. I think that, and, and to Seth's other point, Seth, there is no question and no comparison that this is an Illinois team that, at least for the first 17 minutes, learned a valuable lesson in the first half against Miami. Here's Cowan's first bucket. No. It, it, it's such an important three minutes here, and Illinois knows that because of the mountain they had to climb on Monday to get back. Now, remember this. The only game, really, that Maryland has played really well in the first half was against Marquette. They were down to Harvard. They've been down most of the year. This is not unprecedented territory for the Terps going into halftime. How about Felice shaking by Cowan for two? You know, Felice is a guy that didn't start and didn't care. Yeah, I, you love that from a senior, don't yeah, you? I mean, he, he, what does he care? He just knows he's going to play. Morcel, pull up, too short. Smith, the rebound, a reload, Cowan. See if he takes this game into his hands. He got fouled. He's going to the line. I mean, he's the alpha on this offense when he wants to be, Anthony Cowan. Yeah, and when he has to be. Yeah. yeah. You know, because they have been in dire straits in a lot of games. They've played much better the last two, I get it. But he has bailed them out. And you know what? They also have Ayala, who has bailed them out as well. Uh, I believe the Temple game, he bailed them out with some middle ball screen shooting and driving. So. This game far for over. In fact, I would argue this game just getting started. I got shooter. Second foul on Frazier is a subplot for sure for Illinois as Cowan makes the free throw. Tomorrow, the women's Jimmy B Classic for Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. It's a rematch of the Final Four, Notre Dame and Connecticut. Huskies are 3-0 and against the Irish, the women's Jimmy B Classic, and have won eight of the last ten. Muffet McGraw has had success against Gino, though, the most by anybody. 
against UConn's uh, Hall of Fame head coach. Muffin, I don't know Gino Ariamo. I've had Muffin McGraw on my show numerous times. She is awesome. She's an outstanding coach. Oh, she's a great coach, great person. The support for that program, by the way, in South Bend, you go to one of their games, I, it's it's filled to the gills. That's awesome. It's great stuff. Little zone here. The Subu missed it right. Coburn got out fought for the rebound. Great pass. Oh, oh, oh. Marcel had it blocked, but a foul call. Ooh, no, no, no. Goal 10. I think the Wow, they're going to say count the bucket as Nichols went up. I don't. I think huh. I read DJ Carson say it hit the backboard. Let's see. Oh, no. Man. That's a tough call live. I mean, real time, very difficult. That's a clean That's block, Dan. Pinned on the board and gone. At no point did I think Goldman when that I didn't shot either. went up. You? No. That was a great play. You're going to see some screening the top, driving into a gap, but nobody's in the corner over here. Why do you need somebody there? Well, look at the corner. And if Nichols is going to screen the top man, he's got to screen the left shoulder of number 11. Oh, Coburn with a mammoth slam. <laughs> or Coburn just cut, get open, find him, and dunk it. Look at that position. Stick Smith went out. Watch. How do you let Coburn get inside of you? You're not getting around him. This dude, if people haven't seen Kofi Coburn play, he, you're going to know about him in a couple months. You so. know what he is? He reminds me of Bruno Fernando when he was young. You know, first year, enthusiastic. I'll do whatever you want. I'll dunk everything. I'll, but he can shoot free throws better than Fernando. Yeah, I mean, he he is very coachable. Yes. According to Brad Underwood, loves his personality. He says a little bit raw, but he, I mean, he is very difficult to deal with offensively. Not NBA guys. Here. Yeah, seen a couple of scouts. Leads 12 for Illinois against unbeaten Maryland. Cowan wanted it out top, and they're going to keep it with 14 to shoot. I mean, I at feel no this, point. Will you, go ahead. I just feel this is a huge possession. 14 seconds here for Maryland. You you can't miss, give up a bucket, and not keep this around 12 points. I mean, you can't go down 14, 15. It's a whole different ball game. Looking at 14, here go. That's a beautiful play. Marcel missed the dunk. And it's going to be Illinois basketball. Maryland wants a foul. Marcel is livid on the defense from Kipper Nichols. Good block. What do you think? Good block. Yeah. Kipper Nichols has an influence in this game. Both ends. Belize riding in hard with a right hand. He just out muscled Cowan there, kept his shoulders square to the backboard and knocked it in. He did not get bumped off. He bumped Cowan off. There's Cowan for two to shorten Illinois' then largest lead at 14. And timeout called by Illinois. Illinois by a dozen. We're back in 30 seconds. About the effort by Illinois. Yeah, I'm just going to start comparing it to this game. Illinois has both ends gotten the ball down the floor fast, sprinted the floor, been on the offensive glass, has found each other, has been incredibly unselfish. And on the defensive end, they have been in help early. They have challenged everything with verticality at the rim. Illinois, now, here's the thing. How are you going to play second half? Well, if it's anything like the first half, they're going to win the game. They have to. And now, your Maryland will be a lot of cowing in the second half. There's one field goal late in the first half for Cowan. Oh, put the brakes on. Again. Oh, he took his front foot and pushed himself backwards. Belize has had an outstanding first half for Illinois. Kofi Coburn as well. Illinois by 14 at the break. Nine for the freshman from Jamaica. 
as we send it to the studio. Kevin Connors and Seth Greenberg take it away. How about this, guys? Cancer can take away all my physical abilities. It cannot touch my mind, it cannot touch my heart, and it cannot touch my soul. And those three things are going to carry on forever. Join ESPN and the V Foundation in the fight against cancer. Visit v.org slash donate. All donations benefit the V Foundation for cancer research. Very special week here at ESPN, and we come to you from College Park, where Illinois, in a surprise, has a 14-point lead over unbeaten Maryland, creating some turnovers, shooting very well for the Illini, and Maryland has only one win in the last 10 years when trailing by this much at halftime. It came a couple of years ago against Bucknell. Jason Benetti, Dan Dockage with you, and Brett Underwood said something very interesting at shoot-around. He said he knows basically when he walks out onto the floor for shoot-around uh, how his team's going to play. Yeah. Is that normal? It, it, it can be. Um, here's the deal. Teams are different. Some teams you think are sleepwalking, and next thing you know, they play really hard. This team's different with Illinois. Brad knew before the Miami game, the two practices leading up and the shoot around were awful. And that's not just Brad talking, that's every assistant coach, that's Derek, the SID, everybody said that. Today, I felt like they were pretty locked in. So we asked coach after the game that question. He said, yeah, it's pretty good the last few days. You don't always practice and walk through like you play. But with this year's Illinois team, it seems like that's what it's going to be. But some coaches say, oh, I never can tell. Every, I can't tell. I can't see. But every team's different. Yeah. So with this year's team, with this Illinois team, to this point in the season, they're going to be a team that practices, or excuse me, that plays like they walk through and practice in the days immediately before. Not every team's like that, no question. He really had to get into them on Monday before the Miami game and in the practice leading up to it as well. And now a 14-point lead on unbeaten and number three, Maryland, on the road. Now you say, well, what is a walkthrough? It's just walking through. That's nah, a little bit more than that. You tape up, you go through the other team's plays, and if guys are attentive, then you know you've got your team. If they're drifting off and you got to repeat yourself, you don't have your team. Dante Scott, by the way, has started the second half here. The freshman from Philadelphia getting the start. Well, they want to go match big to big. There's two bigs for Illinois, two bigs now with Stick Smith and Scott. Cowan, two first half field goals. Drive and kick ends up with Wiggins. By Shauna's feeling. He played the post and sprinted out and affected Wiggins. Tell you what, he's not putting up big offensive numbers right now, but his passing and his teamwork have been through the roof. His help side defense, Bashanis Vili, and his hustle is contagious to everybody. Now, this game has been decided by Frazier Williams and all, but let's watch. Watch this here. See where Shanis Vili right there? He comes all the way out, sells out, and I thought he got a little piece of that shot because the ball didn't spin perfectly like Wiggins normally does. That was a third foul on Morcel, by the way. Remember Adonis De La Rosa was with the team last year. A great quote from last season. He said, Georgie's not half crazy. He's all crazy. And that's how we like it. Yeah. Guy right down to our right, Jimmy Patsos. Maryland fans will know there's a lot of crazy. All crazy. Oh, yeah. Uh, Gary Williams, former okay. assistant, coached at Loyola as a head coach for a while. He used to get screamed at by Gary Williams at the same time. I was getting screamed at every game by Bob Knight. We're we're a band of brothers here. Who had it worse? His was on TV a lot more. <laughs> I mean, I mean this where was, was your? Wait, wait, where was I yours? I don't know, but it was almost like Gary Williams would go down to the end of the bench and just start screaming. <laughs> at, I don't know if he was screaming at Jimmy, but he was screaming at something, and Jimmy happened to be right there. Jimmy's a great dude. They give Wiggins the left hand. Stick Smith. They downed the ball screen. They call it ice. They kept it on the side, which is going to allow Smith to get a top of the key three. He's just got to make. Brad Underwood was talking to us about that very thing, forcing people left, forcing guards left with the ball in college basketball. Yeah, when the ball's on the left side, they're going to keep it there. When the ball's on the right side, they're going to keep, they're going to make the guy go to his left, back to the top of the key. Not in the lane, but the top of the key. Demonte Williams had it blocked by Wiggins. Wiggins, oh, Bishanishvili recovered and blocked it. Same thing. 
great play by Wiggins. The ball gets jacked around a little bit, and Bashanasvili is the one out hustling everyone. Look, block, great block. Look where Bashanasvili is. He just comes, sprints by everyone, and gets in on the play. That's 60 plus feet. No question. And, and he's willingly, he's willing to do it every single possession. Just three in the first half. Maryland had no bench scoring in the first 20 minutes of this game. Wiggins got it for three. Boy, Ayala made that play. High ball screen with Scott. You think you're going to play two on one on the left side? He kicked it across court to Wiggins from his favorite spot, right, right wing. Watch out for Frazier. He's up top instead to Sumu. Missed it. Iowa was looking for a shot that whole possession. And he took it right back from Ayala. To Sumu. Got it and a foul. To Sumu. What a great defensive play. Ayala got a little loose with the ball. I just got a text from Seth Greenberg saying he didn't think Maryland was competing offensively. And that's an example right there. That's just lazy. And DeSumo just made a really nice play, overwhelming the smaller Cowan for a three-point play right there on the right elbow. Went right at him. No doubt. He could have given it up, which would have complicated it. DeSumo's about six foot five, long and athletic. He just dominated Cowan. What do you mean by not competing, though? You and Seth talking well, about that. Well, when you're really competing, and he's coming out, Ayala is, that never happens. Never does a point guard just get the ball touched away. And you're down low. You're strong. When you're relaxed, casual, that's not competing. And that's what I thought Ayala was there. So it's Cavalier technique, you're saying? Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Now they're going to talk it over. The officials are going to go to the monitor on that drive. DJ Karstensen will come and offer the explanation for Dan. What do we got there? Frazier got injured, and they're looking to see if anything was there. Something untoward. Frazier on the bench. Let's take a look. As they will go to the cut man you got on the good bench. You got a good cut. Your fight doctor. Uh, so 42-28 as it stands, and that's uh, quite the not that he's got over his mouth. Let's take a look as Desumu drives in. Yeah, but Frazier is away from the ball. Well, Io got in there cleanly. Desumu got the bucket and the foul. Frazier was away from the ball. Let's take a look. Frazier's up top. There he is. Oh, oh wow, yeah. Right, that's a knockout blow from Dante Scott. Yeah, I, Dante Scott's looking at the ball. Yeah, there's nothing intentional there. I don't think so, but you can't see his right elbow. If you could see his right elbow, you might see if he was able to stick it out. But I don't really see it extend. Maybe. He chicken winged him a little bit on the way by. Watch it again. Here we go, right here. Just you know, I don't think there's anything there. It's so hard to impute anything into that. It's so hard to say, hey, he meant to do whatever. Bill Eck is going to come over. Yeah, he's looking at the ball. I mean, that's not always definitive where the person's looking. Frazier is still getting looked at. What Bill Eck say? Bill said we had no angles. He said we just don't have any angles. And this may be the best angle right there, but. Yeah, I mean the one coming from under the basket. But I don't I, I don't think Scott did that intentionally at all. I just think it's But again, if there's a definitive move that yeah. creates Yeah, I don't think there excessive is excessive contact, but well, uh, I mean 
you can be the thing is if you were gonna and i'm not saying he did it intentionally right i, I you can't know that nobody's saying that i promise you i'm not saying that but if you were going to do it intentionally you'd look the other way if you wanted to sell it properly so it's hard absolutely to absolutely no question if you wanted to do it and you knew how to do it you would do it like this now i don't know that you could call this no but but that's why I, where he's looking isn't definitive because if you wanted to sell that you didn't do something intentionally you would look the other way and that's why intent they're they're still looking at it because we've got this other angle so uh, Bill Ack and DJ Carstensen have gone back to the monitor to take a look at this along with Terry Oglesby and you know I mean we're talking about excessive contact above the shoulders whether intent or not you can have a, a flagrant foul on this you can have a flagrant one and, and first things first you have to by rule go look at it absolutely officials have to do that yes. if there's contact with somebody above the shoulders you must go look at it. dj's coming back over here and i bet you they put a flagrant one on this That's what they're taking a look at. Bill Eck is having a conversation with Mark Turgeon about it. Yeah, you're right. They called it an F1. Yeah, I, you, you can't know intent, so you've got to judge the contact, and that's what officials are looking at, so it is a flagrant one. Yeah, that's what they said. Yeah. You know, that this is the look, too. He just said that we got the look from under the basket, and there it is. Yeah, that's that's the one that ended up with Frazier on the bench. And so Ayo Desumu is going to take the free throw. You know, the one thing about basketball that I've always said, because there's no pads, you're exposed. You can hurt somebody if you want to. You know, football, you got all these pads. And basketball, you're so exposed. If I have the ball and you're up into me, I swing an elbow, I can hurt you. Or, or I can. So I think you have to be extra careful when somebody gets hit in the face and that's why it can't be about intent right because you'd have people doing exactly what happened there and meaning to do it yeah and I don't getting know away scott, i don't know if scott meant to do it or not i have no idea and that's why you can't judge right. the intent yeah yeah by the letter of the law that's the right call by this group the the gold rush is not enjoying it here in college park but with a couple of misses by Desumu and Feliz, maybe that energizes and rejuvenates the Terrapins. He does get one. This is a great, not good, great student system. A wall of students behind where they were shooting just now and a bunch of guys behind us. This is not a good student section. This is a great maybe the best in the country smart basketball fans loud throughout no matter the score so the flagrant one against Dante Scott is his second personal Cowan off the pivot for Scott and that was wild two Illini players fell and Cowan pays it off and Smith made a great play he just came into the game number 10 and instead of forcing the action he just flipped it back to Cowan The rumble starts in College Park. Desumu. Rebound for Maryland, a foul against Coburn in Illinois. Two on Coburn. The lead's a dozen, but it feels smaller, Dan. Yeah, it does. I would I would get Cowan involved either on the initial right here with the ball screen or after they've ran 10 or 15 seconds and tried to maybe get it on the block right, Cowan's got to be involved here he goes Cowan turns the corner and a whistle before the make that's the third on Kofi Coburn they called him for holding Smith as he was coming up to do what we just talked about which is set a high ball screen for Cowan you got to get Cowan another shot in. And Cowan's got to get himself another shot. Coburn comes out with a three fouls at 16-38. Circle that. Yeah, but that's not terrible. Because small lineup is really how they got back in the game against Miami. They're not a 
afraid to play a smaller line. Here but, comes Smith. But does the matchup work the same against Maryland? Ooh. Cowan got sideswiped, and he'll get three free throws out of the deal. Police is so willing. He's so tough. He got hit in the face. They might have to look at this one, too. Ball screen. Let's see. Lots of hip. He was set. Now we're going to have to look at it again. Yeah, they're going to go take a look and, and check on the screen. I get Brad it. Underwood does not love the defensive play by Feliz. No. And I get because when I sit at home and I watch five games a night, I get tired. Of the, but this isn't the ref's fault. This is what they have to no, it's do. No, it's in the rule book. We'll watch it again. Take a look. I mean, Cowan on the rise, on the elevate, Cowan got him as he was climbing and, for the shot. Take that's a look. exactly what Bill Eck just told me they're looking at. Watch the elbow of Cowan. There's I don't think there's anything there. The yep. But again, same thing. Same type of thing. Intense, not the case. We'll find out when we come back. The majestic unfurling of the flag here in Maryland, a tradition here at Xfinity Center. Team is down, flag is still coming down. As let's take a look one more time at what was referred to as a normal basketball play by Bill Eck when he came over. I think this is a normal basketball play. I think that Cowan is going up. I think that Felice got off balance because of Stick Smith's screen and he ran into him. I mean, if you're going to call that a flagrant, which they did not, then every play is a flagrant. Well, it touches. could be. I mean, to, to clarify, not. to clarify, Intent is not dispositive. It's not the only thing. You can look at intent, but it's not going to make or break a flagrant one foul. The contact and where it happened is more important. And if it's a normal basketball play, like we just saw there, that can wipe away the possibility of a flagrant one foul. That's the most important part. Because when Bill came over, normal basketball play. Scott's running into Frazier. It's not a normal basketball play. I mean, you walk, you run by people all the time. You don't hit them or run into them. Two for two for Cowan. Yeah, I just want to be clear. We had talked about intent, and it does have a role in the discussion, but it does not make or break the flagrant one foul. It's a piece of evidence against or for a flagrant one. Cowan three for three. The lead is nine for Illinois. Kipper Nichols halfway through the shot clock. The shot is really the screen for DeSumo. And a travel against Demonte Williams. This is the best part or the most different part that has made Maryland good. They can guard you and they will guard you. I always felt in the past Maryland had two major flaws. One, they threw the ball away too much. Two, they didn't have the toughness to sit down and guard they do this year and you just saw it right there they're turning opponents over 15 times a game in their first nine yeah and it hasn't been an indiana type schedule it's not been the greatest but it's been good enough an indiana type schedule is 340 out of 350 they, you know playing all cupcakes maryland hasn't done that we saw where that got the hoosiers today against wisconsin Wiggins, no. Offensive rebound for Stick Smith, and it got whistled into the backcourt. Boy, this is where Stick Smith needs to grow as a player. You get a rebound like that, you're off balance. You put the ball to your chin, and you gather yourself. Then you make whatever play you need to make with knees bent. His knees were locked. They were straight. He was off balance. He couldn't make a pass, so he threw it to the other end. So then the ball comes and sails away to the student section. Lead is nine for Illinois. That was bad. I got it. Dennis DeYoung.
Kipper Nichols, hard drive and a score. Yeah, Scott got confused there. That could have been a very simple switch. Scott was guarding Nichols. He never got back to him, and Nichols, being a senior, took advantage, didn't settle for a jumper. Sorrell Smith Jr. getting to play here in the second half after sitting the first half. Talon pull up. He got it. So smooth. You're going to get a lot of that. I told you in the first half. You're going to have to guard Cowan. Middle of the floor, high ball screen with Smith. I mean, it was about 16 minutes without a field goal in the first half for Cowan. And now suddenly he's got 14. That's why he's had a great year. He's been big late. Now, question is who's scoring for Illinois here? Coburn on the bench with three personals. This shot is Vealy was fouled. Wiggins got on his back, and if it's Wiggins, it's his third. It is. Let me show you what I'm talking about on top, because you're going to see a lot of this. You're going to see the ball screen go here. The man guarding has to hedge and then get back. This guy does not do this right there. Okay? Scott stays way too long, hops, and when you hop at the end, you are so off balance, you can't change direction. He couldn't get back. Foul trouble for Marilyn Wiggins with his third. Morcel, the very talented defender, gets him nine points a game, also with three. I think I think this kid here, Frazier's got to be involved. Honorable mention all Big Ten last year, Frazier. Feliz caught in the lane. Got a look at the hoop and the rebound for Smith. You said it perfect. He got caught in the lane. He thought he had a couple things, didn't have him. He was just caught. Cowan's got eight straight for Maryland. He wanted 11. He's itchy. Instead, stick Smith. Offensive foul, his third personal. Boy, I want to. Mark Turgeon's going nuts. I felt like Smith got grabbed as he made the move, and then he plowed the defender over. Let's see. Now, you see anything. That's number three. It's, take a look. Right there. It's but no. swipe, but he didn't. Yeah. Turgeon is, saw what I saw, and he's pointing outside of the lane. Maybe he wants a circle, too, in the restricted area. No, he wanted. He wanted I watched where he was pointing. He was pointing about three notches, two notches, three notches up where the swipe came. You a, a naval guy? You're using notches? Here's the shot as Billy bumping for two. He's got that in him offensively. And that was good defense by Mitchell. Mitchell took away his right shoulder, but Vashanis Vili just stayed after it and eluded Mitchell. Tell you what, Vashanis Vili doing a great job talking defensively. Ayala. No. Morcel wanted to go right back up and does. But he's deaf, man. If you don't block him out, he'd kill you. He is tough on top, Marcel. And this is going the other way against Illinois. This is a good call. Deshaun is really pleading with Terry Oglesby who said you grabbed him, George. Well, he just went right into him. I mean, he tried to bury him. Watch here, you're gonna see coming right down the lane, just hooking, backing in. You cannot put your elbow above the shoulder, or that's gonna be caught. It's an easy call, actually. And honest, slow, slow honestly, you can go to the monitor on that, too, sure for the could. contact above the neck. I hope they did. They haven't, they didn't. <laughs> Marcel driving, although he looks a little gimpy to me, or this right here. Middle of the floor with Kyle. Another offensive rebound try for Scott and Maryland, and we've got a foul against Illinois. Tell it's on Feliz. I, Scott's banged up a little bit from the fall. I thought he got the wind knocked out of him, but his hamstrings tightened up. What's Scott here battling 24? He comes in, man. He falls on the ball. Right in the shin. He got a That's hand a to the face and a kick to the side. I mean, they, they don't like the call, but the referees are instructed when a guy's down and he has the ball, you can't reach around, grab a guy to get a jump ball. 
tell you what, they let him play in the first half, and there's a threshold for letting him play as Scott goes to the sideline. There's a threshold for letting him play that they just can't hit at some point. I mean, that's got to be a foul everywhere. I love it. You bring it out here. Cowan. And that's going to go against Hart, the freshman for Maryland. Tomorrow, 3 Eastern College Basketball continues on ABC and the ESPN app. The eyes of Texas will be on Fort Worth. A&M and the Longhorns from Dickey's Arena, the brand new Dickey's Arena on ABC. Jay Billis, Chris Budden, and I will have that for you. Andrew Jones, 6 for 8 from 3 last time out for Texas, a team that's shooting better than it did early in the non-conference. Rashadish Billy just discarded and didn't get whistled. Would have been his fourth foul. I, mean, I thought he traveled to start, but he is just taking it at the freshman. He has great confidence. This is this is a good move for Maryland right here. Middle of the floor with Ayala. Really good. They did it late against Temple. Temple played him tough, tough, and tough, but they got in the middle of the floor with Ayala and he delivered. Why do you like it there? Because he's strong. He's really strong and there's no help side. Everybody has to stay with Cowan. You can't leave him. So it's spread, and he's got room, and he's strong. Foul is on Makai Mitchell, his second. The freshman identical twin. 21, Makai Mitchell, 22, Mikkel Mitchell. Identical freshman twins for Mark Turgeon. You ever coach twins? Uh, no, I was instructed by my mentor, the great Bob Knight, never coach brothers and never coach twins. They'll make you crazy. One really? sad, the other sad. <laughs> it's been interesting for Mark Turgeon. I've done, I'm the official broadcaster on TV in Maryland, apparently, so I've talked to Mark a lot. It has been very interesting coaching twins for Mark. One and one, by the way, with 12.07 left. I mean, you want identical twins? There they are. Makai 21, Mikel on the right, number 22. Very difficult to tell apart. They wanted to room together, and Turgeon wouldn't let him. Really? Yeah. Now, Mark told me they live in sp different dorms. The SID told me they live on the same floor. So I don't know, <laughs> but I know they don't live together. Maybe they're keeping it from somebody. I don't know. Well, interesting lineup here. Four. Well, for Maryland, you've got a couple freshmen out there. There's Hart. Hart. Good play. Marcel wants to drive, got into Nichols, and he got a whistle against Illinois. Georgie B. Yeah, Georgie B can dance, and he can dance in the post a little bit, too. He goes right shoulder, he goes left shoulder. It's pretty nice right here. I thought Mitchell played good defense. And then he takes Mitchell to the opposite shoulder, a little flip. Georgie B rolling on a Saturday. Stop. Last time Illinois got a top five road win. Do you remember a 35 footer oh, from Nick Anderson? Man. Do you remember anything about that? Jay Edwards, I was on the staff at Indiana. Jay Edwards hits a baseline, falling out of bounds over the side of the backboard. Look it up. And then Nick Anderson. Whap. Sent the Hoosiers home. Did you enjoy playing against the Fly in Illini? Well, I was on the staff. We won the league that year and won it going away in a surprise in the year when Michigan won the national championship with Glenn Rice and the Illini got to the final four. We whooped up on Michigan, but we could not handle the Illini. They were very good, but we ended up winning the league and got a ring, so don't at me. Should we just take that under advisement that we should never at you? When should we at you? <laughs> Is that Dockage is hates my team support? tour 2019 20. Where's the bus pulling into next? Uh, Penn State uh, on okay. Tuesday and then Iowa uh, wait, wait, Ames on Thursday. Should we at you during those games? You can at me. Uh huh. I'll respond because I like to. I thought you were over Twitter. I but know. That was for 12 seconds. <laughs> Frazier, no. Look at this. Offensive Hamlin. rebound, Jermaine Hamlin, the freshman in for the first time in two games. With foul trouble for Bishanis Vili and Coburn. Ayala to the corner and Hart. One four is on Scott returns for the Terrapins. 
Turnover for Maryland in a 10 point game. So Hamlin gets a little time in the first, but uh, not substantial no. minutes. I mean, we're talking about 11 minutes left in this game. He's playing for Illinois. Right, but here's the deal with Illinois. Io number 11 has to be the guy, but he's against the toughest guy in the gym, Marcel. Who is going to score for Illinois? I think Maryland's a little more comfortable offensively right now. Jasumu left it short. Well, he's a guy that seeks the shot yeah. when there's a vacuum. And he did. I mean, he did to his detriment late in the game, one point game against Ma Miami. But who is going to score for Illinois? This kid will score for Maryland. A little bit short in Devontae Williams, the rebound. You know, it's funny. He could have moved in about two feet. Talking about Cowan on that jump shot. Frazier has Cowan right in his pocket. Scott picks him up now. Frazier, no. And the rebound for Stick Smith. You throw it in, not necessarily for Coburn to score, oh boy. But you throw it in to create something. Marcel gave up the shot that got volleyballed back to the sideline. And it's Maryland ball. I thought Marcel might pull the trigger on that three. Yeah, I did too. When they kicked it to him, I thought he was wide open. He's going to lift up. Nothing better than watching a shoe get tied on national television. I enjoy a good shoe tying in the middle of a basketball. I mean, it's the eye of the hurricane, right? All this action going on, and then a guy tying a shoe. There's something classic about it. Oh, yeah. Down lane, Ayala tried to step it, couldn't do it. Hey, what? Well, Kofi came over, made a nice play. I don't know if he got it or not, but he reacted. You're going to see some weave action at some point because they're stagnant right now in Illinois. Frazier to Coburn. No. And it's batted out of bounds. This is going to be Illinois basketball. Back to the dunk. Pretty good reaction. I know he didn't get a piece of it, but Coburn coming from where he came from, and a kid just really learning how to play. Basketball is a game of read and react, and he read it and reacted nice. That after a nasty dunk the other night. Wiggins at the end of the first half Ooh. following his own shot against Notre Dame. And that's going to be against Coburn. That's his fourth personal. He didn't need to do that. He just didn't need to do that. Smith had inside position. And you live to fight another day if you're not going to go get the basketball. You know, it's interesting. Fouls roll in the, uh, the mind of Brad Underwood quite a bit. We talked to him uh, in the shoot around this morning about that very thing and how fouling has changed his defensive philosophy since coming to the Power Five from Stephen F. Austin. Well, let's look at it. Just take the Big Ten. Who've been the best teams? Michigan under John Beeline, Bo Ryan in Wisconsin. They didn't foul and they did not turn the basketball over. And when they started going to the hand check calls, when they started going to freedom of movement, more fouls were called. Virginia wins a national championship. What do they do? Villanova, they don't foul and they don't turn it over. Used to be you worried about rebounding, right? You got to rebound. You got to do it. No, now don't foul, don't turn it over, and find a bunch of guys that can shoot and you can win a lot of games. Yeah, keep the opponent from the free throw line. Keep your good players on the floor. And both teams you strong know, from the line. You know who's doing that as well as anybody in the country? Who's that? Butler. Yes, Kamar Baldwin had another fine game today. There's your weave action I talked about, just to get movement. They've been stagnant. Brad Underwood likes this kind of stuff. Trying to find a seam. And it's going to be four on Bishanish Vili, I think. Let's see who they do get the whistle on. It's on Kipper Nichols instead. Bishanish Vili was in the area, too. Nichols called for the foul, his second. Yeah, both were right there. Pick one, I guess, but Nichols going to kind of move. Whenever you turn like that, it's the same as turning on a down screen away. It's a moving screen. The foul is going to be called. Wiggins, powerful drive. No. And a rebound, Phillies. Well, you can live with that, though, if you're Mark Turgeon. Wiggins going to the rim. You like that all the time. I'd have to go to a little weave if you want, and then Bashan is dealing.
But John is really looking for position against Scott yeah. down low. Yeah, Nichols wanted to throw it, made a good decision not to. Off the skip, intercepted by Smith. I'm telling you, there's nowhere to go right now for Illinois. The way they're stagnant, the way they're going. Defense has carried him here in the last few minutes. Morcel does trigger this one for three. Are you saying we went too long, Kevin? You blaming us for that? Colorado and Kansas will start on the app. Uh, we've had a couple reviews, and we've had a dandy of a game. Maryland trying to climb back from an 11-point deficit with 12.30 to go. They closed within five in less than four and a half minutes. You said post-touch during the break. They got it there, but couldn't finish. Uh -oh. Good post-touch, good move by off his knee. Morcel, yeah. uh, yep, turned it over. Yeah. Big difference. Big difference with Georgie going against Dick Smith than going against one of the freshman Mitchells. Smith did a little something, something on that shot. Halftime, this is familiar territory for the Mar Maryland Terrapins being down a bunch, 14 at half. They're not afraid to come back. They've outscored Illinois by nine, and they played fantastic defense. You're seeing buckets go in here because a lot of guys from Maryland can make shots. But their defense has been sensational. Illinois hasn't found anywhere to go offensively. Where should that be, do you think? Well, I mean, depends on the lineup, certainly. I, I, I've got the sumo's our guy. And I've got to look at him in the mid-range. He can make shots. You're just looking to get a bucket, a little screen for the screener. The shot is Billy against Dick Smith. And he blocked it in the next Tuesday. Yeah, it's a little different than playing against a freshman Mitchell. This is where you're okay here, too. Get in the lane, make a play. Kipper Nichols. Oh, oh big shot. Oh. It's a two oh, foot on the Nichols. line. What a shot by Nichols when their team was reeling. It was six in a row for Maryland. Lead was down to five. That's the shot I told you about. He's got to look to shoot that next time they do it. He wasn't square on it no. when he caught it. Morcel in the post. Short on. Oh, Wiggins was open at the wing. He was calling for it, didn't get it. Yeah, and then he, he was indecisive. He jumped nice, but then he short armed the shot. He jumped too high, which is I'll take a half hour to explain. Next dead ball, you're gonna do it. Little wrap around to shot at Bailey against Smith. Got the arm bar into him. A lot of banging, and it's going to go the other way. That's number four on Bishanish Billy. They let it play for a long while, and then finally the whistle comes, and Brad Underwood is incensed. You better be careful. Now you just leave. He did. Good move. He's saying that there's an arm bar. On Bashanis Vili. I don't know that there is. I mean, I thought that Smith kept it in tight. And Bashanis Vili went and created the contact. You talk about early help. Smith, or excuse me, Scott was there early to help Smith. Two bigs, four fouls for the Illini trying to win on the road against the top five team. Boy, they guard Wiggins. I mean, Felice is on top of Wiggins on the left side of the screen. Dick Smith against Kipper Nichols didn't get the ball. Morcel to miss and the box out for Nichols. Don't let your best player beat you. So they jumped on top of Wiggins and they jumped on top of Cowan. And if Morcel's going to make it from the mid range, they can live with it. Frazier, Bishanishvili. He's got to go against Smith and the rebound for Wiggins. going to score. Good shot at Philly. Thought he'd take the shot. He didn't. Well, he can get that shot if he wants it. It's four of six. Four of... 
Desumu. Little pendulum with two. Desumu. Oh my! He cupped it, protected it, kept his chin on the rim, banked it in. That is some fun He's stuff for do two it. guards. Look, end of the game. It's but not plays. It's players. It's not plays. It's great players make plays at the end of the game, whether it's NFL football, college football, college basketball. Players, watch this. Whew. He gave it to him. Frazier lifted up. Cowan stayed low and whooped him. Now Desumo here on the other end. How about this? Look his chin. See, he keeps an eye on the basket. Players, not plays, people late. Look, it's December, but this is the first Big Ten game for both these teams, and we are seeing dudes just take over. Balling, and you look, they should too. Cowan should, he's a senior. I mean, he is climbing up every ladder, except for rebounding in Maryland history, so you expect it out of him. DeSumo's a guy that had to make a decision. Do I go to the NBA, do I test the waters, or do I come back? So you expect him to do it. I tell you what, Watch late in this possession. High ball screen, throw it back to Smith for a three at the top of the key. It's been available the past and couple possessions. They haven't really gone to it. The one time they did, Smith fumbled the ball. And the reason, if there's not a zone, is because you're going to make Kofi play a ball screen, then a reaction play. Let's see if they go to it. Coburn's got four fouls. He's down there with Smith right next to him. Standing around. Ooh, man, they just went to a little baseline cutter action short. Way short from Ayala. It was a terrible possession. Here's why. They went to blocker mover. Big guy on the left side, big guy on the right side, two guards cutting. You know what the guards did not do? They did not sprint. They jogged. They walked off the cut. And when you walk off a cut, you don't have any legs into your shot. You shoot short. When you sprint, your body's used to moving at a certain pace and you get up into the stroke. Out of a timeout as well. That was bad possession. Ooh, he got a steal. Oh, oh call for a foul. Wow. That was a lazy pass. He got him with the, he got him on the right shoulder. Take a look at the hand on the right shoulder. Kind of hit him from yeah. behind. All right. Uh, considering what we've seen in this game, though, that has not been a foul of points. Frazier, 86 percent from the line, one and one, got the first. This is what you do not want to do when you're playing down the stretch and a team is struggling to score. The last thing you want to do is put an 86 percent free throw shooter on the line. You don't blame Cowan for going at the ball, but man, you do not want this. He's missed three times all year for the free throw line, Frazier. Illinois got the last four. It's a nine point game in the Big Ten opener for both teams. Frazier denying Cowan, face guarding him at the wing. Trying to lull him to sleep. Stick Smith the jumper for two. Well, that was nice by Smith. Remember I said he got off balance and threw it the other way? That time he took his time, got on balance, and lifted up for a little short jump shot. I'd go back in there. I'd go with a high ball screen with he and Cowan. Ooh. Near steal for Cowan again. He is right into Simmer's pocket. To Sumu. Oh, he tried to himself. Yeah. He yes. Sure did. He didn't get over there quite quick enough to get set. Oh, we're having some fun. How about this? Illinois has not beaten a top five team on the road in 30 years. And I was there. I didn't like it. Kevin, thank you. Pac-12 improved this year, certainly. Uh, Big Ten's probably the best league in the country at the start of conference play. This being game number one for both these teams would be a huge win for Illinois if they can hold on. Oh, man, they need it like they need air. You got to get wins, right? I mean, to get in the NCAA tournament. But more than that, the Big Ten title is what 
let me put it this way. A lot of fans downplay the accomplishment of winning your conference. In the Big Ten, it is huge. And this would be a great start for Illinois on the road against the number three team in the country. Georgie can move his feet now. He has four fouls. Look at how they're playing Cowan. Look at how Frazier on top of Cowan, bottom of your screen. He's denied him the last couple possessions. On you can back cut if you'd like. But you're not getting the ball easy. Brilliant. Ayala to short. And the rebound, Illinois. Bill Belichick every Sunday night, and I say it every game, tells his staff, these are the two guys on the opposing team of the next week that is not going to beat us. We meet tomorrow. You tell me how we stop them. That's exactly what Illinois is doing. Brad Cowan Underwood. is not beating him. Brilliant defensive coach, Brad Underwood. Yeah, brilliant. And the players are far more in tune mentally than they were the other day, obviously. Desumu at the end of the shot clock, and that didn't get off, I don't believe. Rebound Maryland anyway. There's a shot right there. Stick Smith. Nice it down. Don't know why you don't go to that every possession. You got your two best players involved, Kyle and Smith. Crowd stands with 218. Bishan is really isn't going to take it. Who will? With four, they're 30 feet away. To Sumu. Rebound, Bishan is Philly. Ooh, great play by Cowan. Cowan got in there right in front of him, and down they go. It's Maryland ball if it's alternating possession. I mean, Cowan just crowbarred it out of there, and they both went down to the deck. Let's see. And then you're going to have to worry about Smith coming in from behind here. Cowan made a great play. He tried to get it initially on the rebound, and then he went back in and got it. Anthony Cowan, who on his 18th birthday got a chest tattoo that says ambitious. It was a very ambitious play to turn it over. Take a look. All right. He tried to get it now. This is a great play right there. To great stalk play. It. Now you got to watch. Now after this, it looks worse than it is, and I don't know that Smith pushed him. I think he just tripped him. Let's see. Right here will tell you. Hi, Bill. Bill X going to come and deliver the news. They're going to go look at the monitor. Stick Smith stood over him. He didn't push him. Okay, we good. were watching the replay as you were talking to Bill X. I'm glad because you don't. Look, Illinois has played great. Maryland has battled back. You just want the game to come down to who's going to make plays, not who's going to do something stupid. Yep. So I'm glad to see that Smith did not do that. They're going to go jump ball, and away we go. That's Good. the right call. Well That's done great. again by this crew. who has been very impressive today. This crew has been fantastic. I know people in the arena, obviously the home crowd doesn't like every call, but this has been a very difficult game to officiate, and these three guys have handled it terrific. And what speaks to that is that there was no post-play stuff after yeah. that possession arrow situation. When I saw a guy go down, I saw Smith behind him. I'm so glad he didn't because, hey, look, you want players making plays to decide the game, not doing something dumb. And we're going to have that down the stretch here two minutes ago. Illinois has not won its league opener since 2014. Inside the freshman, Dante Scott. And that should be a flop as well. It's a two-point game. What a pass. Little triangle action run the baseline. They jumped off Scott. Illinois did. And this is a great pass from Cowan firing it across. Boom. A little too far. Let's see if we get a flop. Oh, yeah. So there was no flop prior to that, so no technical issue. That's the warning on the flop. The next one is a Class B technical and a free throw. Yeah. 145 to go. They're going to heat him up in the backcourt. One of the great environments in college basketball coming alive. And a whistle against Maryland. 
You cannot do that. Which? You are, the foul. You are giving a 90% free throw shooter two shots. Which and part it, of this? Right. You just got to square your shoulders and don't foul. Just move. Even if they get it across half court, they are struggling. They being Illinois to struggle scoring. Look, if you and I go after a ball and I run in and it's a foul because I'm hungry, that's fine. But that just gives a one and one to a great, not a good, a great shooter. Originally signed by John Gross, Trent Frazier, who's now perfect five for five from the line. He's the guy that's always wanted the last shot through his basketball Ooh. career, and he missed that one. Absolutely no need for a three unless it's wide open. Maryland's last lead in this game was three to two. You want a tie? You want a chance in a tie? Eyeball screen. Back to Smith. Cowan. Too strong. Smith the back tap for Cowan. Wiggins pull up. Short. And the rebound to Monte Williams. No, you got to play without fouling if you're Maryland. Keep the ball on the side, play without fouling. And if you're Illinois, Ayo DeSumo has to be involved. Illinois timeout. timeout, Illinois, as we check in with Kevin Connors for an update on Colorado, Kansas. It's a 30 second timeout. Yeah, will a minute seven contain this game is the question as Maryland looks up in the rankings at Kansas and at number one Louisville. The Illinois fans are checking their watches to see if 67 seconds might elapse for them before we can blink. All right. If you're Illinois. They'll go, I would assume, to kind of their weaving action. The only reason you don't is you're afraid of an offensive foul like they got on the handoff. But he, but Brad Underwood likes the weaving action where every guy that comes off of it on the right or left side of the lane can get an angle going to the rim. Late clock, I got to believe it's Tasunu with the basketball in the middle of the floor with a ball screen. Surprise Let's see. Coburn's out of the floor here? A little bit, yeah. Freshman big on the bench with four fouls. Bishanishvili has four as well. Bishanishvili clearing out, dips the shoulder, and the rebound for Scott. Yeah, that's bad business. Because Smith has eyes on Bishanishvili. He's not getting away from Smith. Cowan denied by Frazier. Little screen from Scott. Wiggins for the tie. Oh, and a soaring rebound, Morcel. That's tipped out of bounds. It goes to Maryland with 17 to shoot and about 30 seconds to play. The Terrapins call timeout. Timeout, Maryland. Question is, in what condition will Scott Van Pelt be for Sports Center tonight after <laughs> UFC fight night? Herbie and Reese have their college football playoff top four predictions. Coaches will lobby SVP and then highlights from the UFC special night honoring Stuart Scott. Sports Center with SVP on ESPN and the ESPN app. He's got his lucky testudo dangling around his neck. Whatever Scott Van Pelt does to get Maryland to win, he's doing it right now. Well, he's the Johnny Carson of our generation. He is magnificent. He and Stanford Steve. Stanford Steve hanging out all day in Indianapolis. The Big Ten championship game sent me a text, wanted to know. I'm telling you. Cowan with the ball, middle of the floor, spread him out, ball screen with Smith. Cowan does not need to do anything other than make the right play, which is go to the rim, kick it back to Smith. That's all you need to do. You don't need to confuse this. We'll see what happens. I thought Illinois made a bad call on the inbounds just going to Bashanis Vili because you can tell out here, and I know you can, Jason, Smith has Bashanis Vili locked up. They, they have not figured out Illinois yet. Middle ball screen with Smith. Here's a middle ball screen, but it's Ayala. Ayala killed the Switch. dribble. Now Smith for Cowan with nine to shoot. Cowan for the tie. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. From Northern Virginia. First tie, 10 seconds to go in the Big Ten opener. 
Warrior Cowboy. He's lost it. it. Kilfarm oh, goes down. down. And a foul. And a foul against oh. Illinois. Oh, man. it up and there's your foul but here's the shot that got us here watch his feet come on Dan all America all world all whatever you want him to be I love this kid he's my new Aaron Kraft I'm telling you he does everything got two shots here to win it you want to bet on it uh -uh. In this entire building, this is the guy I want to know. Maybe in the entire country. Slows down the heart rate. Cowan gives Maryland its first lead since three to two. Timeout, Illinois. And what a heart ripper for the Illini. What you got? My goodness, I, what a game. This is the Big Ten opener. This conference is going to be absolutely insane this bananas. year. Bananas. Just bananas. And Maryland, you're not going to win every game going away, home or away. Illinois came in here angry, as we said at the get-go. We also said Cowan Lake has been the best thing in college basketball thus far. He asks for the spotlight, and he basks in all of this noise. The NBA folks said get bigger in the offseason. He added 10 pounds, and you see him come out of the scrum against some tough dudes with a basketball that might lead Maryland to a win as Coburn comes back on the floor with the four fouls right. for Illinois. Let's set this up. You make the free throw here. Or if you, if you miss the free throw here, rebounder, I'm telling you, you got number 10. Where you got number 11, you kick it and you go down the court into the middle of the floor. Oh, we missed it on purpose. No timeouts for Illinois. Oh man, Feliz! Oh. No, Maryland wins. A furious comeback in the opener. You better believe that kid's a star. His first team All-American. The best thing in college basketball has been Anthony Cowan late in games. He's fantastic. And for Illinois, an absolute gut shot oh. in the Big Ten opener after they played 39 minutes of awesome basketball. 59-58, your final score. For Dan Dockich, I'm Jason Benetti for our entire crew. Now out to Allen Fieldhouse, Kansas, Colorado.